Simulation Theory by Jonathan Lippi, Chapter 10, Part 3, 80s Kids Films Featuring Science, War Games, The Last Starfighter, Flight of the Navigator, Cloak and Dagger, Batteries Not Included, Explorers, Short Circuit, The Bible Code Films, Pi. This movie got me excited about math. It introduced me to the idea that everything about life and existence can be quantified through numbers. There is a discussion of the Fibonacci sequence that is found everywhere in nature. It touches on the Bible code, concepts of it, a group of people trying to get secret information, numerology, patterns, the stock market, and tons of other cool stuff. It is a movie that introduces people to new ideas in an artistic way. Is there a pattern to the stock market? Is there a pattern to Pi? Code Conspiracy A movie about the Bible code with different groups trying to get the secret information. Omega Code, another movie about the Bible Code. Omega Code 2, Megiddo, not about the Bible Code, but about the New World Order and the Battle of Armageddon. It was pretty good. It came with a third DVD for the computer where you can do cross-referencing of the Bible. But I don't know how to read Hebrew and doubt the translation to English will work. I saw a great story on ESPN about Reggie White, the former football legend. After he retired from football, he spent time learning how to read Hebrew. He was in search of the truth. He found it and died shortly after. It was one of the proudest stories I've ever watched because he really won at life. He found the truth. May the force be with you, Reggie. Revelation. Movie sort of about the Bible code, sort of about Freemasonry, but suggests the return of Christ will be from cloning the DNA of his blood on one of the nails he was crucified with that was kept safe through generations. What a cool concept. We can bring back dinosaurs. We could bring back Jesus. The secrets of Sir Isaac Newton were featured in this film, just like in The Da Vinci Code. National Treasure. Hidden code in the Declaration of Independence, dollar bills, and Freemasons again. Secrets hidden in plain sight. Da Vinci Code. More stuff hidden right under our nose, staring at us, and we don't even see it. More Freemasons. Alternate story about Jesus' lineage. The real interesting story behind Da Vinci Code is all of the hoopla that surrounded it. The Skulls Why is everyone so bent out of shape about secret groups of people in real life? Doesn't everyone belong to some secret society? Fraternities? Doesn't everyone have secrets? A skull above the rest! What kept me interested in all of this Bible Code stuff is the inclusion of Sir Isaac Newton and Leonardo da Vinci. They are two of my favorite historical figures. I don't remember where I had read it, But I read that Sir Isaac Newton had always thought there was a secret message hidden in the Bible, but the computer wasn't invented yet for him to discover the pattern. He thought the Bible was passed down through generations, not because of the words that are read, but because of the secret cryptic message hidden within it. Why are all these films about Freemasons and hidden secrets in the Bible? Is it just to capitalize on the interest that people have of secret societies, founding fathers, cracking codes, secret information, and Bible-related conspiracies? Or is there something to all this stuff? I find it fascinating and fun for its conceptual value. I enjoy watching these films because they show you a hidden reality that is supposedly right under your nose, under your fingertips, waiting to be discovered if you open your awareness. I love hearing stories about secret societies and people living double lives. Other notables. Antitrust. Kind of scared me about Microsoft. Netforce. Tom Clancy. Scared me about Microsoft. The Game. Living a game, alternate reality, and unaware. Stir of echoes, hypnosis. The cell, a little bit of interesting psychology of subconscious. Memento, imagine if you could only remember five minutes of your life. Anterograde amnesia. The one, quantum theory. Jet Li is trying to kill all of his other selves in the multiverse so all the energy would go to just one of him instead of being evenly distributed to his 150 other selves. Unbreakable. We are all superheroes. Final Fantasy. At the time, the graphics were amazing. Save the planet. Batman Forever. Jim Carrey's character is trying to control your brain when you watch TV. Just like real life. Cable Guy. Jim Carrey's character's life is based on things he saw on TV because TV was his babysitter. I learned about the facts of life! From the facts of life! Back to the Future Saga. 
This movie did for our understanding of the risks of time travel what Jurassic Park did for our understanding the risks of cloning. 12 Monkeys, Time Travel, Blade Runner, Artificial Intelligence, Terminator Trilogy, Nukes, Robots, Demolition Man, Foreshadows Arnold Schwarzenegger Running for Office, Socialist Utopia Gone Wrong, The Wall, Pink Floyd Showcase on Tyranny, Serendipity, Things Happen for a Reason, Synchronistic Events, Cocoon, Aliens Rejuvenating the Elderly, Frequency, Everything in Life is a Frequency, Congo, Diamond Weapon, Monkeys Communicating with Humans, Conspiracy Theory, I was hoping on more conspiracy theories. Interestingly enough, I bought a few copies of Catcher in the Rye, and I always would buy copies of Celestine Prophecy. Lately, I've been hearing fluoride in the water isn't so good. A Beautiful Mind. Math and finding patterns are cool. Dune. Controlling the spice trade is like controlling the oil trade. Eyes Wide Shut. Secret Societies and Bizarre Rituals. THX 1138. George Lucas. Scanner Cop. I just remember this movie to take place in multiple dimensions. Time Bomb. It's like a real-life version of the Montauk Project conspiracy theory. Castaway. Just makes you think how you would spend your days if you were stuck on an island by yourself. Total Recall. Selling Air. Plugging into virtual reality memory implants. Lawnmower Man. Shows the dangers of making people too smart. I'm all for it. It's like Flowers for Algernon and Matrix mixed together. Hurley Burley. Great dialogue. The O'Reilly Factor. Not really impressive anymore. Harp. Holes in Heaven. Interesting documentary about Harp. The Simpsons. Quality satire. South Park. Always has something interesting to say. Animal Planet. Watch animals. Apply your observations to humans. It's the same thing. Discovery Channel. Good documentaries, but have been lame lately. Tech TV. We need more stations showcasing technology. Twilight Zone. Think about reality in a different way. Outer Limits. I never saw it, but I heard it was good. Quantum Leap. Change history. What dreams may come. Characters talk about choosing their lives and finding each other in future lifetimes. Very interesting. Mothman Prophecies. We don't explain reality to a cockroach. The Prophecy Trilogy. Missing chapters of the Bible. Things to Come. 1930s film using the words New World Order. A movie about if World War II had lasted until the 1970s and shooting people to the moon with a cannon. Metropolis. 1930s film about what they thought year 2000 would be like. Michael Jackson History. MJ lost his reputation but the videos and subject matter for this album have substance. I like MJ when he's making songs about his concerns about living, even if I don't agree with his politics. I like that he seems to give a crap about life on earth in those songs. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. A, B, C. Always be closing. Wall Street. The richest 1% own 90% of the wealth. It's all about bucks, kid. Everything else is conversation. Boiler Room. It's all about the Ben Affleck scene. The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. Pay it forward. Do random acts of kindness every day. Some of all fears. What if the Super Bowl got nuked? Apocalypse Now. I can't figure out what everyone sees in this movie, but they see something. Black Hawk Down. Let's you see what warfare is really like. The most realistic looking film about war that I've ever seen. It causes you to respect and appreciate the sacrifice soldiers have done for the U.S. Saving Private Ryan I hope the soldiers who gave their lives for this country know their sacrifice was worth it. I hope everyone acknowledges and respects their sacrifice. We all benefit every day from that sacrifice. They gave their lives so that our lives can be safe from evil. I have felt safe my entire life with no fear of any enemies attacking me. That is a convenience many people on earth don't enjoy. Support our troops and the United States. Philadelphia Experiment. Movie doesn't do the legend justice. For Al Bielik, it did. It was good, though. The Lazar Tape. Excerpts from the Government Bible. This taught me at an early age all about theoretical physics. One of the most influential videos I've ever seen. Joseph Campbell, Power of Myth. 
Campbell shares his knowledge about common themes and stories. Alex Jones. You just need to see one Alex Jones film from Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.tv. They're all the same. David Icke. Watch one David Icke video. His repeat themselves too, so you only need one. Commanding Heights. Battle for the New Economy. The Best Documentary on Globalization. Revolution OS. Learn about the history of Linux and open source. Elegant Universe. Brian Green explains string theory. Soylent Green. Mass Media Mind Control. Eating Humans. Syriana. Interesting Perspective on the Oil Trade. Space to Surface Laser Weapons were demonstrated. An Inconvenient Truth. Global Warming. Cube 2. Hypercube. Cool Multidimensional Mathematics. Dirty War. Depicts a present-day nuclear terrorist attack in England. This movie came out right before the 7-7 bombings. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Jim Carrey gets memories erased. I Heart Huckabees. Existential Detective. The Day After. Really made me fear nuclear war. Capricorn 1. About faking the mission to Mars, but could be interpreted as faking the mission to the moon. JFK. The biggest conspiracy theory of all time. Brave New World. Social Engineering. Failsafe. Nuclear War. Spy Satellites in the 60s. Tomb Raider, Angelina Jolie and the Illuminati. The Good Shepherd, Jolie and Skull and Bones. Her and her father are in a lot of movies with secret societies. The Secret, The Law of Attraction, You Create Reality. Hyperspace, The Universe in a Nutshell and Kaku's Hyperspace all in one visual video with Sam Neill. Southland Tales, Fluid Karma, Time Travel, Perpetual Motion, Quantum teleportation. Teen horniness is not a crime. The Zeitgeist Movement. Great documentary about the Venus Project and how to build a resource-based economy. More titles. Altered States. The Awful Truth. Bowling for Columbine. Koyana Skatsi. Pawana Skatsi. Nakoye Nakatsi. Taken. Bruce Almighty. Equilibrium. Stargate. 2010. Videodrome. Butterfly Effect. Idiocracy. I've left so many out, but I think you get the point by now. Fight Club. Man, I see in Fight Club the strongest and smartest men who've ever lived. I see all this potential, and I see squandering. God damn it, an entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves with white collars. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy things we don't need. We're the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. And we're slowly learning that fact. And we're very, very pissed off. Dogma. Dogma was a good film for people to lighten up about religion. Office Space. I estimate I do about 15 minutes of actual work in a day. Waking life. They went overboard with this. It could have been better. Bug. The scene in the tinfoil room near the end of the movie when Michael Shannon says, If you want to know what is going on, you need to listen because you don't understand the enormity of what is going on. Films about extraterrestrials. It is amazing how many movies and TV shows there are about aliens. I remember hearing that aliens are the new dragons or make-believe creatures for us to believe in through folklore. Here are just a few. K-Pax. Alien visits Earth to drop knowledge on humans. He takes on the shape of a human because that is how we express ourselves in this dimension. He could take on many forms depending on where he goes. We are souls inhabiting a human body on Earth. The Forgotten. Psychologists working with aliens to erase memories, confuse humans and run tests on them. V. Reptilian aliens shape-shifted as humans. Dreamcatcher. The military has been battling aliens for over 25 years. Dreamcatcher and Swordfish suggested scenarios for the justification of killing Americans for a greater purpose. They drive Chevys. They shop at Walmart. They never miss an episode of Friends. These are Americans, and I have to kill them. It turns my stomach, the thought of killing Americans. 
but I'll do it. I'll do it because it must be done. Fire in the Sky, about Travis Walton. Intruders, based on Bud Hopkins' research. War of the Worlds, scared me into not wanting an alien invasion. Communion, based on Whitley Strieber's experiences. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I saw this in middle school, and it is the reason why I was scared of aliens for so many years. E.T. There is a legend that Ronald Reagan saw an advanced screening of E.T. and said to Spielberg, You know, there aren't six people in this room who know how true this really is. Spielberg sure made a lot of movies about aliens. Knowing. Solar flares and aliens watching over the chosen ones. Mars and space films. Mission to Mars. This is the greatest space film in my opinion. They land in Cydonia, Mars. Cydonia is the area where the face on Mars is in real life. I thought it was so cool that they actually went there. I often wonder why our robotic missions to Mars never go there. And in the movie, they even go into the face. I was blown away when I saw this film. When the astronauts go into the face, the Martian they meet shows them how all life on Earth came to be that we originated from Mars after Martians evacuated because of an incoming asteroid. Not only did the Martians leave Mars to populate Earth, but also the rest of the universe. There is the most fantastic 3D morphing of an explanation of evolution that I had ever seen at the time in that scene. Other neat features in the movie were references to the double helix of the DNA, cracking the Martian code of the sounds emitting from the face, the Pathfinder Land Rover robot, the gauges the astronauts had, how real the weightlessness looked, and how real Mars looked. I loved this film. It had everything I wanted. Red Planet suggested that we launched plant life at Mars a while back and it finally has grown into moss to create a breathable atmosphere for humans. It was cool too how there were times where the orbit of Mars would be on the opposite side of the sun as the Earth, blocking communication for a short period of time. This movie came out around the same time as Mission to Mars. Two Mars movies at the same time? Hmm. Stranded. The majority of the movie was lame until they leave the spaceship to find what is on Mars. When they find that cave with the hieroglyphics and that they can breathe the air, it was cool. I really enjoyed when they were walking and the astronaut was talking about how he heard stories of the great valleys of Mars and now he was there to die but felt fulfilled because he got to see it. Space exploration is very important to me. Mars is extremely important to me. I would love to see a movie that takes place on Europa or Titan. 2001 Space Odyssey. The monoliths are the single most fascinating aspect of this film. The monoliths represent the idea that aliens or someone created mankind and left the monoliths to track the big steps in our evolution of intelligence. The scene on the moon when the astronauts find the monolith just fractures my mind when I think about it. The movie was made in 1968 before man officially walked on the moon. The robot HAL is the single most influential reason why people for generations after that film fear technology and computers. Technology is wonderful. I can't imagine how blown away people must have been in 1968. There were monoliths in Alien vs. Predator. 2010, the year we make contact. All these worlds are yours except Europa. Attempt no landings there. Both 2001 and 2010 focus on Jupiter. If you take Jupiter and change it to the moon or Mars, it begins to make more sense. Maybe we were told by Moonanites not to return to the moon. Maybe that's what Houston, we have a problem, really was about. I was amazed that astronauts knew about water or ice being on Europa in 1984, because the first time I learned of it was in 1997. Common element of all these films, there is life on other planets. Genetic mutation films, Mission Impossible 2. This wasn't about genetic mutations, but was about man-made viruses. When the bad guy tells the mayor that he was going to release the virus upon the civilization and he could buy the antidote cure for a large amount of money, makes me wonder about the annual flu vaccinations. I wonder if they release the flu every year to sell vaccines plus kill off old people. I wonder about SARS. I wonder about AIDS. Resident Evil 1 and 2. Keeping humans alive without a soul is interesting. Mutating viruses. 28 Days Later. Starts like how Resident Evil 1 ends and how Part 2 begins. Shows the flaw in thinking that PETA has. Shows how dangerous genetic engineering is if it gets out of control. 
Leaving the movie theater after seeing this movie made me so happy that we have mind control over the people to have a safe and civil society. I walked out of the theater shouting, Let there be mind control! Let there be MTV! Let there be multi-million dollar marketing campaigns! This was so much preferable to me than the chaos of zombies. Spider-Man. How Spider-Man was created was interesting. Hulk. The scene where Nick Nolte has the ability to attach to anything and become it was amazing. It made me realize why we are all one. All of our feet are on the ground. Thus, we are all connected. He uses that to defeat one of his enemies. The genetic experiments the janitor witnesses reminds me of a story a guy told me about hearing about monkey men, pig men, and a whole bunch of other crosses between human and animal that he said somebody told him they witnessed in a secret lab. I think they go to a secret lab in Alaska at some point in the movie. It seems there are tons of secret labs in Alaska and Antarctica. The first 45 minutes of the movie had tons of genetic experimentation information, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Then it all turns to action, which made me yawn. The Fly. Mixing man and other creatures. When I was a little kid, we used to always talk about crossing animals like it was a normal thing. I haven't heard much talk about that in my later years. Common elements, genetic mutation, man-made viruses, genetic weapons, viral weapons, zombies used by the military created in laboratories by multinational corporations, genetic enhancements, secret genetic experiments. Designed and planned to evoke emotions. TV shows and movies are shot and filmed to a storyboard that has been thought out. It's not like you using your camcorder, hitting record, and taping everything in sight. It is all very specific with angles that subconsciously convey meaning and pans that suggest passages of time and colors that will create a mood. These movies cost millions of dollars to create. I know I'm overboard with my movie viewing. I just know there are people who watch movies to pass time. Actively pursue the movies you want to see. Don't be programmed. You are the programmer. Pull technology, not push. Make life happen. Don't let it happen to you. That's all. Get your money's worth out of life. Now that this information is out there, disinformation or boring movies will follow so you won't believe this. Hopefully, even more good stuff will come out now that the cat is out of the bag. I hope I've enhanced your future movie-going experience. This concludes Chapter 10. Thoughts from the Author I've said this in the other videos, so much has changed in 9 years with YouTube. So like... I would never write this kind of stuff nowadays because I don't need to. It's been done. You know, there's an abundance now of top 10, top 20 videos. Uh, you know, top those top 10 videos that you watch of any genre, like the top 10 mind-bending movies, the top 20 conspiracy films. None of that really existed in video format yet. Uh, even clickbait. <laughs> I mean, there was some forms of clickbait, but it was primarily targeted for porno. <laughs> not for everything else, or or click here for like quick money schemes. You know, everything is clickbait nowadays, like headlines for news are clickbait nowadays. Um, and Wikipedia, while it may have existed at the very end of me publishing it, the lists and the advanced way that Wikipedia exists didn't exist back then. Like I try to report on things that I feel haven't been represented because I know that if it hasn't, it's probably not going to get covered by mainstream unless somebody does it makes it successful, then it becomes mainstream. So that's what I try to do. I don't like to repeat things. I don't like to copy things. I like to be the originator. I'm always in a competition to say something new under the sun because I'm always, people are always saying, oh, there's nothing new under the sun or, you know, just trying to like kind of shoot it down saying that, you know, you're not original, but my quest is to be original. Now, sometimes I may say something that someone else had discovered already (laughs) <laughs> but I didn't know about it. So to me, it was it's new. But, you know, somebody else beat me to it. But if I knew they beat me to it, I wouldn't make the video or write the book. I wouldn't take my time to do it. So I'm always panicked that information is being suppressed and it's up to somebody to say something. And we've been through 10 chapters now. And how pleased am I that I did publish this in 07? Because, you know, whether or not it spawned from my book, there are... There's hundreds of thousands of conspiracy theorists on YouTube making videos. And while some of them may be, you know, far out there, I'm happy they exist. I'm happy that all angles are covered, that everything, everything is on YouTube. YouTube is incredible. When it first came out, I thought, 
are they really going to let us do this? And when they started putting cell phone cameras on cell phones, I was like, are they really going to give cameras to everybody? This is amazing. This is going to transform everything. And sure enough, it has. And Facebook, Facebook and MySpace and social networks, I don't know if I already said this in this series, but those things got people into computers. And I don't know if it's just the, the, the matter of time where the younger generations that came up on computers started to be in the majority. But even my peers and people older than me, when they got smartphones, suddenly they finally saw the value in computing or the internet. Whereas before, and I was like the lone ranger out there all by myself with my computer and my modem. And uh, But after, uh, after the smartphones, now everybody has a stake in the internet. They're semi-tech tech savvy, or at least they think they are. And then you have the few people that just hate it all together, and that's fine. But social networking and smartphones really, really jumped the game for technology. The big disappointment and liberation of 2016 is Flat Earth. So it really negates all the space films that I talked about and all the Mars, that even the dreams I had about Mars. You know, if, if the Flat Earthers are right, there's no space, no planets, no satellites, none of that. And while at first that might be kind of depressing... Especially that your whole reality was lied to. I mean, nearly everybody had to go through Earth space science. Everybody believes that outer space is real. All these movies were created to condition it. The globe was in all the classrooms. And we were all taught that this, that out there is real. And if the flat earthers are right, it's not. All that stuff is not out there. All these stories about Mars that we have, make-believe. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I don't know yet. Like I said, I haven't been to space. I said this on, on the One Flat Earth official video I've made on this channel. I haven't been to space to see for myself, to know. I've only seen the GoPro cameras that people have sent up on air balloons. And those have only got up like 110,000 feet. And supposedly the, uh, the, the International Space Station is like 250 miles up. So I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe space exists. Maybe it doesn't. But I'll say this. It's been liberating thinking that it all doesn't exist. Because it's so much less for me to have to contemplate. Before, I used to think, how am I going to travel to these planets? How am I, you know, there was a lot of, I felt like a lot of weight on my chest. And now thinking that none of that stuff is out there, and this is all there is to it, it's, it things are a lot easier. And all the legends of the past start to be more interesting. You know, I put a lot of my philosophy into the idea that extraterrestrial aliens were real and existed and have visited our planet from other planets and a lot of uh, into Mars and, and space travel. And, you know, most people won't confront that maybe their reality was incorrect. I, I don't know if mine was or not. Like I said, I've, I haven't been in the space to verify it one way or the other, but I'm willing to confront that and move on. And adopt, you know, try to. I feel like a child again, where I'm reevaluating everything that I see, everything that I've been taught. It's it's like what Yoda wanted Luke to do. Forget everything that you have learned when learning the ways of the Force, because you you have to. There, <laughs> nearly everything we've been lied to about, and why would they give? Why would they give us real information like that? Mothman prophecies. It said you don't explain reality to a cockroach, and we're probably viewed as cockroaches. Why would they give us any insight? So we have to create our own science and not just rely on the experts. And there's three films, actually four films, that have come out in the, since 2014 that have a recurring theme. And that it's Man of Steel, the newest Fantastic Four, uh, Transformers 4, actually the whole Transformers saga, and the X-Men Days of Future Past. And that is the government didn't like that they were unable to control completely, have 100% control over the visiting aliens, visiting robots, visiting or, or the mutant superheroes. And they needed to control it. They couldn't trust if they couldn't control. And I had always heard, and I still don't fully understand it, but people used to say, wow, you should have been, you should have been a teenager or a 20-year-old in the 60s. The 60s were the time where all this thought and stuff like this was happening. They don't allow for it anymore or they don't they don't equip you with the knowledge to even be on the level of the people of the 60s. And I don't fully know what that means, 
And I've also seen that, you know, the the people that came of age in the 60s were the last generation to receive quality instruction. And, you know, sometimes you'll see those memes or those uh, clickbait that say, can you pass a, a, a middle school exam from 1912? And like, nobody can. And you're like, man, how, how are they taught so well? And you look at the engineers of the turn of the century and we can't create, ha- we can't do any of the things that they did. You look at, you know, like Tesla and Edison and Watt and Volta and all the, all the scientists seem so far advanced compared to what we know. And I was, I was looking at some old fashioned artifacts from the, the ancient times and I'm like, I don't know how to do any of this. How do these people know how to do this? I don't know how to do anything. I don't know anything. I'm stupid. And yet I'm considered semi-intelligent and I feel like I know nothing. But what it is, they came from a period of time where they weren't told that everything was figured out. They were the pioneers discovering reality without limitations. Anything was possible for them. In our lifetime, we're told that pretty much everything's been figured out. So, you know, just go watch the football game because there's nothing new under the sun. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? It's crazy how this just kind of like came full circle. So it's like we're not inspired to think that we're on the cutting edge, the cusp of breakthroughs in technology. You know, all those scientists I was mentioning, they were discovering it for the first time. It's not like they had, like for us, we learn about what they knew about versus them discovering these things for the first time for mankind. So we need to kind of get that feeling back where we're the creators of, we're the discoverers that, that discovery spirit, that explorer spirit. We're exploring, you know, reality and discovering new discoveries. New discoveries are made all the time still, but it's not the same. It's not like it was. And it seems to be just by the few. You know, we don't have that explorer spirit anymore. Wisdom is kept from us. Real information is kept from us. Why would they tell us? They're into control. Monetary system controls us with money. People believe in money. I just want to know what's going on. I hate feeling like I'm a pawn or a livestock on a farm somewhere. I hate to think that I'm imprisoned against my will that I'm working just to work, just to occupy my time. I'm an adult. I want my free time. Make sure you're using your time wisely. If you're going to watch movies, don't just sit in the room and stare at blinking images. Try to connect these all. Try to figure out what is it that they're trying to do here. Try to see the the grand scheme and how these all interconnect. Granted, they're just movies. They're really there to make money. But like I said, there's always at least five minutes of something of value that you could derive from it. And, you know, those other flat earth clues in this video, you know, even back then, 2001 Space Odyssey, I said, man, how did they do this? How did they know before they went? You know, and uh, I think there was a couple more I mentioned that I've seen mentioned in flat earth videos around the, uh, around the internet. So back then, even though I believe in space, things just weren't adding up for me. I had questions, but I was too believing that space really existed because it's so hard to believe that it doesn't. So I, 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 I'm not ashamed to admit, you know, maybe I was wrong on space because, I mean, man, they, they sure spent billions of dollars trying to convince us that it's real. I don't want to get too flat earthy on people because I know not everybody's into that. Uh, but one of the funny things I have observed is through like disclosure communities, pro-alien existence communities, they have a vested interest in NASA being r- at least hiding the truth about aliens. You know, so that would imply that they've traveled space and they're keeping the information to themselves. And it's kind of strange to see the the quarrel that begins when once alien believers turn flat earthers start poisoning, you know, the minds of everybody saying, hey, you know what? Space isn't real. And if space isn't real, then aliens aren't real. And, you know, everyone, it's just kind of weird seeing, seeing people that were once against the government <laughs> now supporting at least that space is real you know it, it's a funny it's a funny fight it's not funny it's it's interesting to see how how that battle plays out because up until that point you know people that believe in ufos feel like they're on the right side of the truth 
and you know that that everything's being suppressed and now they're saying now flat earthers are saying well no actually all space is fake which means space aliens are fake and everything it's a bigger hoax than you could even imagine yeah you were right that there's a hoax going on but the aliens are part of the hoax of space being part of the hoax or whatever hey, if you believe in space that's good and i'm not knocking what you believe up until a couple months ago that's what i believed and I just challenge you to show, you know, I want to believe, like X-Files, I want to believe space and aliens really exist because then I can go back to what I was doing. Now, you know, I'm trying to refigure out existence all over again. And if the flat earthers turn out to be right, that means how brilliant of a hoax that NASA created a hoax upon the hoax where they created the UFO community to say that NASA was hiding, you know, the truth about existence and the truth about aliens. When in fact, they are the ones that created that whole entire narrative. It's brilliant. I mean, it's, it's, it's just baffling how far the rabbit hole can go. So, and like I said, I really don't know. I don't know if it's flat or round or spherical or if it orbits the sun. I don't know, man. All I could do now is go off the GoPro cameras. That's it. And my own observations. Because I, I can't believe anything anymore. I can say that Flat Earth does lend itself and is aligned with simulation theory and 13th floor where they just didn't program anymore. You know, if this is all there is to it, we are all gamers on this plane of existence. So I'll just leave it at that. This chapter has been a fun chapter to re-experience and relive. Uh, since then, I've observed so many more movies and I've made a lot of videos on it and PowerPoints and other things. Uh, but this definitely was good to revisit this chapter. It's been a pleasure reading it. The next chapter is chapter 11, Conclusion. But after the conclusion, there also is an appendix. So I'll see you then.